Hi guys, uh, today I'm going to show you how to implement a very simple login uh, using a RESTful web service. So this method of authentication is known as basic authentication and it's really easy to do. I will be using uh, NetBeans IDE and my REST API will be running on a Glassfish server. Uh, I also have a database set up on XAMPP uh, using MySQL. So this is the database here. It's just a very simple database um, called users and it has one table called accounts and it just stores the ID, username, password and email of a user. So hopefully by the end of the video you'll be able to create a very simple login using basic authentication with a RESTful web service. Now guys, just to mention, if you're not sure on how to set up a RESTful web service, you can check out my other video where I set up this uh, simple web service here that's based on the same database table that I just mentioned. So how uh, basic authentication works is you more or less send the um, login details with every single request you send to your API. So whenever you're trying to access anything on the web service, uh, you'll have to send your user's email address and password. So the first thing that we want to do is we want to create our own endpoint. And we're just going to use this endpoint to check if the user's login credentials are right. But this could be used to get any attribute from the, the database related to the user. So the first thing you need to specify is what type of request it is. So in this case, we're going to use a GET request. And the next thing is the path. So we'll call this uh, check login. And then you have to say what type of um, media it produces. So for this one, we'll just say text plain. So we want to just create a public method that returns a string. And we'll call this uh, check login as well. Now this will take in what's known as a header param. So a header parameter and we'll call this authentication. Now, so the next thing what we want to do is check if uh, the user is authenticated. So we're going to make a method to check that. So we're just going to say if is authenticated then return success. Otherwise return error. So if the authentication method uh, returns true, it will return a success message. So let's just make this authentication method now. So if we click here, create method. So now we have this method here. So we're going to actually pass this the authentication string. So this is going to take in a string. Now, so what we want to do with this message is we want to, first of all, we need to decode the string because when you send uh, your request, it's going to be base64 encoded. So we need to decode that first. So we'll make a variable called decoded string. And we'll just leave this as empty at first. Now, so we'll split the string that we got in the request and put it into an array. So we'll call it auth parts, and that is equal to auth.split. And we want to split it where there's any white space characters. I'll show you this later on in the video uh, when we're passing in the request. Now, so we want to get the first element in that array, so we're just going to put that into a string called auth info. And then we want to create an array of byte and call this bytes. And we'll equal that to null at first. And we're going to use a try catch here.
So bytes is equal to new, and this is called a Bay64 decoder dot decode buffer. And then we pass in our string there of info. And what we're going to catch here is a IO exception. Call that E. And we could just print that out then. Now, oh, so that'll print it out. Oh, this should be new, not news. Now, so you might need to actually just import the, the files for the base64 decoder. So if you, you just hit Alt and Enter, that should do it for you. We've decoded the authentication information now, so we can pass that back into the string we made earlier. So decode string is equal to, and we'll just cast our bytes array to a string. So we'll say new string bytes. Now, so we have that as a string now. So if you want, you could just print this out here just to see. And when it runs, we can see that we have it. So the next thing is that the actual information in the in the authentication uh, header is going to be sent with a colon in between. So the email address and the password will have a colon in between it. So we need to split that now as well. So we're going to do the same thing again. So string array, we'll call this one details. And we'll just say uh, decode auth dot split. And we're going to split this at a colon. So the first uh, element in that um, oh sorry, this is decode string. So the first element is going to be the email address and the second element will be the password. So we're going to say string email is equal to details zero and string password is equal to details one. Now, so we have the email address and password. So the next thing we want to do is pass that to our abstract facade, which is going to actually check these against uh, the ones in the database to make sure that it's right and that it exists. We're going to make a method in our super class that returns a Boolean. So we can just return super dot, and we'll call it authenticate. And that class is going to need the email and password to check against the ones that are in the database. Now, so our super class is the abstract facade here. Just a heads up, guys, as well, that the design patterns that are being used here is called the abstract facade. And that's actually outside the scope of this video. So you can actually look that up if you're not too sure what's going on here. So more or less in this class here, we're going to use a criteria builder, it's called, to check if the email and password match anything in the database rather than writing an SQL command itself. Now to do that we need a method so we're going to call this public and it's going to return a boolean and we're going to call it authenticate as we said earlier and that takes in a string email and a string password. Now so we're going to be using a criteria builder and we'll call this CB and we'll equal that to get entity manager dot get criteria builder. Now, the next thing is we want to create a query, so it's called a criteria query. And we'll call this query. And that's equal to our criteria builder dot create query. This is more or less guys just creating an SQL command by the way. So now we have to just uh, say the root class which is our guy here. So it's accounts. So this is where we're checking the information. 
and we'll just call this root. And that's equal to query dot from accounts dot class accounts, sorry. Now, so a typical SQL command would look like select something from the table, which we've specified here, which is our root, and we would say where. So you'd say where, we want to say where email is equal to the email address in the database and where password is equal to the password in the database. To check this, we want to say query dot where, and we're going to say cb dot equal because we're checking if they're equal and we want to get the root dot get and we'll say email here this needs to match the column name in your database so we're going to put email and we'll do the same for the password so And we'll pass this password here. Just put a comma. There we go. After that, we want to create a typed query of accounts. I'm going to call this TQ. Get Entity manager dot create query. And we're going to pass this our query that we made. So query here. Now, so what we want to try and do is we want to see if we can get a result from the database that matches this. So we're going to check if this actually gets a result. So we're going to try And we're going to say accounts. We're going to make an accounts object. A is equal to tq dot get single result. And if that works, then we're going to return true. And we're going to catch what's known as a no result exception. Call that e. And if that happens, we're just going to return false. So now we can save this class. We'll head back to our accounts class. And just something that I noticed here, guys, is that this should actually say authorization, not uh, authentication in the header param. So it should say authorization. Um, so now that uh, everything's fixed, we can actually just deploy our web service. So that deployed there now. You can actually test this in a couple of different ways, guys, as well. Um, so if you have Postman or anything like that, you can use Postman to test it. Or if you don't have that, you can actually use a built-in testing uh, client that NetBeans offers. So what you want to do is just create a tester program, just any other web application. And you come to your project and you select Test for Raspberry Web Services. Then you browse and you pick your testing program. Click OK, OK, and that should run it here. And you want to go into Web Pages, come down here to uh, testrespeans.html. You select whatever browser you're using, right click on that, and hit Run File. Now, so we get this uh, web page here. So it has our web service, and we can actually open that up. And we can see our method that we made, check login. And now, so you actually want to click here, custom request headers, because we're going to be passing the information as a header. And I just have it set out here, but I'll show you again. So what you want to do is you want to type authorization here with a capital A. And because it's basic authentication, you want to just write basic here. And now we need to put our email address and our password here. But we need to base64 encode that first. So I just have a website here called base64encode.org. So you can just use this to more or less encode um, any string 
So I'm just going to come back to my database here and I'll show you that this guy's username or his email address is bob at gmail.com and his password is bob. So they're the parameters that we're going to pass. So if we write bob at gmail.com and a colon and then his password, which is bob. So we can encode this here and this is our encoded value. So if we want to copy this and bring it back here to where you can test and just paste this in here after basic with a space in between. So you can test and as you can see we got success. Now I'll just show you that if I change this to have anything else this should return an error. So we can just grab this now and we'll just swap this one out. And as you can see, that's an error. Now, so that's pretty much the end of the tutorial there, guys. I uh, hope that it was pretty simple and that you understood it. And if you have any questions or anything related to it, just leave it down in the comments. I'm sure I'll get around to reading them. Uh, thanks for watching.